Okay. Thank you everybody for joining us today. We are really excited to announce the Ultium Motion System and share with you some of the details uh, as well as some examples of uh, it in action. Uh, for those of you who are joining us for your first webinar with Neraxon, welcome. Uh, and I'll go over a couple things here before we, we kick it off. Uh, we will have a question and answer section at the end of the presentation. So please feel free to type in any questions into the Q&A section or into the chat box on Zoom. We will uh, get to those uh, at the end. And <clears throat> of course, you know, what I'd like to start with is just talking about, you know, some of the advantages and the challenges related to inertial motion capture. Uh, obviously, the Ultium Motion is our second generation inertial motion capture system. So some of you may be familiar with our Research Pro systems or our clinical IMU systems. And so to kick it off, uh, I just want to touch on you know, some of those advantages of why inertial motion capture is, makes sense for a lot of people to utilize uh, for looking at kinematics and, and biomechanics. So of course, you know, a big one is its portability factor. So given that it's a wearable system, you have the ability to take this system out into uh, field scenarios as well as, you know, use it in various different lab spaces or clinic spaces uh, and, you know, not have to really fuss around with too much of a setup. Uh, of course, you just have to apply the sensors onto the subject and, you know, make sure that they're generally within the measurement range. Uh, and, and that's it, and you can, you can capture data. Uh, another advantage, of course, is its ease of use. Um, so if we look at this compared to a traditional motion capture system, um, again, you know, describing that workflow of just having to essentially place sensors on the body, perform a, a quick calibration, and then you're able to stream in that live kinematic data and start to use it. And then we have direct measurement. And so this is really, you know, looking at uh, the differences between inertial motion capture and some of the new forms of motion capture that are coming out um, where we're looking at markerless motion capture, for instance. Uh, those are using computer vision techniques and, you know, it's not actually taking any measurements of the individual, but rather, you know, doing uh, image processing to make uh, estimations. They have shown to be work really well, but then there's also chances that they could uh, mischaracterize certain movements. And what inertial systems allow for is that direct measurement of the rotation of the acceleration of that particular body segment. We can take that directly measured data and then we turn it into the kinematic data uh, by putting it through some various uh, processing pipelines. It's those direct measurements that allow it to achieve. Uh, accuracy levels that are, you know, close to uh, the traditional optical motion capture systems that might use uh, marker sets, for instance. Um, and also, it gives us an ability to actually look at certain parameters that even some of the optical systems can't necessarily measure that well uh, with respects to internal and external rotation or immediately measuring rotational velocities or the impact accelerations that are actually occurring. When we look at it with reference to those other systems, uh, again, you know, they're just looking at how something is traveling inside of a known volume and then applying math to get to the rotational velocity or get to the acceleration. Uh, with an inertial system, you of course are measuring those data points. And so you can use those to your advantage depending on whatever application that you might be working with. Now, that isn't to say that it's a perfect system. There, of course, are some challenges. And, and with these challenges, this is something that we uh, at Neraxon are, are trying to tackle each and every day as we continue with our, our development and our innovation over here. So with the Ultium Motion System, that was something that we really wanted to address is, is some of the you know, top challenges that are experienced uh, by users when an inertial motion capture system is in operation. So of course, uh, the biggest one, um, and many of you I'm sure have dealt with this, uh, is with reference to magnetic interference. 
So given that the inertial sensors do rely on uh, a magnetometer as one of their data inputs, any ferrous object, um, anything that has a, a magnetic field, be it passive or uh, active magnetic field, can start to interfere with that magnetometer's data and skew it uh, over time, cause some drip. Uh, and so that has traditionally been a challenge with inertial motion capture systems and, and you know, us along with other companies in the market are con constantly, you know, working on different ways to handle that and, you know, have, have created some sophisticated uh, techniques to be able to manage that magnetic interference. And of course, you know, what we wanted to address with this system is, of, is you know, how do we handle that better at the sensor level? And then what can we do from the software side to, to manage that experience better as well? Next is going to be high impacts and velocity. So the, the inertial motion capture systems up to this point have really only been able to capture data that is, let's call it, you know, within normal ranges of human movement. Um, so that would be things like walking, you know, uh, general range of motion tasks or daily activities. Uh, of living. Um, but what we found over the time that we've had our, um, our myomotion systems on uh, the marketplace, which has been about eight years now, is that people have consistently, you know, taken that advantage of the portability, for instance, and brought it into these field situations where now they're looking at high performance. They're looking at really high impacts, high velocities in various different movements, be it sprinting, or you know rotational sports um, or you know any other forms of, uh, of dynamic movement and the previous systems given their limitations have not necessarily been able to keep up in certain uh, uh, certain situations and that was a challenge we would try to manage that as best we could using software techniques and and uh, see what we could do there but at the end of the day, it was really the range, the sensor itself, that was causing that, that, uh, that issue uh, in those situations. And then next, as far as challenges are concerned, is sensor displacement. So describing this, of course, given that it's a wearable system, and you can see here in the picture that we've got these sensors strapped onto the individual, after we perform our calibration, uh, if those sensors move, and the body doesn't actually move, that's going to have an effect on the information that you get or the outputs that you uh, receive afterwards. So sensor displacement is kind of a twofold um, uh, challenge because it can be caused by a few different things. That can be not only just how the sensors are fixed to the subject, so what kind of strapping mechanism is being utilized, but then also, is the sensor large? Does it have a lot of inertia that it's going to, you know, when it receives high impacts or velocities, is it going to move uh, just based off of its size and its weight? So with these three challenges in mind, um, that's what, again, we really wanted to focus on as we created the, the Ultium motion system. And so I'd like to, you know, go over some of those feature sets that uh, help us address those challenges. So of course, these are our key features and I'm going to, to break these down um, one by one uh, as we go through the presentation today. And so, of course, you know, one is just the state of the art sensor design. So uh, providing the ability to achieve measurement ranges that have not been seen before uh, with an inertial motion capture system. Similarly, you know, on an internal level, uh, providing high sample rates. So taking more data uh, as we, uh, for measurements that are going to provide us with less error um, and, and more data to utilize to, to fill into our, um, our fusion algorithms that we're using to provide that kinematic data. Uh, small form factor, so making the sensor smaller, lighter, so that we don't have to address some of that uh, um, uh, sensor displacement issues that we might have seen previously. And then, of course, the universal connectivity, and I'll get into this in more detail, but this, you know, really actually plays on more of an advantage of the system and allowing that ease of use to really take hold 
uh, and, and be something that can be um, promoted uh, when you've got multiple devices that might be in operation uh, within the Neraxon platform. So let's break this down. So if we talk about that state-of-the-art sensors design, so in this case, what we're looking at is a baseball pitch. And you'll see here in the second video with the Research Pro system, that when we get to that release point, the model completely breaks down. This was not something that we were able to achieve with the Research Pro system, simply because those measurement ranges were not adequate. We can see it here in the data stream down below that when we approach that 1600 G mark for the hand acceleration, which is basically occurring right at that release point, right when that whip like effect occurs, it completely flatlines. It's not even able to take any more data up to that point. And so you can do some tricks where maybe you do some interpolation and you try to estimate what that peak will be. And maybe you can fix what the model looks like to make it pretty. But at the end of the day, if the data that's providing the inputs for this uh, output here are not sound and solid, then you're not gonna have good information to utilize to make any decisions to perform your research. So if we look at the other side now, and something pretty glaring that I always like to bring up is if we just look at the scales. In this particular case, we can see here that this is topping out, you know, the, the upper end here is 17 Gs, where the upper end here is 80 Gs. And you can see that as we go through this motion, we're seeing that hand acceleration peak out at almost 70 Gs of acceleration. And we're actually able to measure that with this system. We can see that full waveform all the way up to the peak, we're getting a smooth motion as we go through the throw here. And, and of course, that's then influencing what we're seeing on the, the avatar model. So it's, all, it's, it's pretty interesting to see how much data we are actually missing with the previous system when it came to you know, high velocity movements such as this. Going from a 16G measurement range to a 200 G measurement range is really uh, allowing us to, to break that barrier into these high performance activities. Um, in addition to that 200 Gs, we're also able to capture rotational velocities up to 7,000 degrees per second, whereas the previous system, the Research Pro system, could only capture up to 2,000 degrees per second. So that's all, over three times as much uh, data that we can capture with this system and then definitely you know, approaching those upper, upper limits of uh, human movement. So next uh, key feature would be that high sample rate. And what this provides us is the ability to actually have more data to utilize when we push it through our, our filters. Um, that starts on the internal level. And uh, with the Ultium motion system, we're capturing data internally at 1600 Hertz. If you compare that to the Ulti, or sorry, the uh, Research Pro system, that was only at 800 Hertz. So with the new sensor, we're actually capturing data internally two times faster, and that's uh, influencing our outputs and giving us the ability to output kinematic data at 400 Hertz. This is the highest sample rate that's available for a inertial motion capture system on the market at right now, as far as kinematic outputs are concerned. We're already fairly high with the Research Pro system, allowing up to 200 hertz of, of uh, kinematic outputs uh, with a full body system, but now giving the ability to achieve even higher, uh, with 200 being the low end and 400 being the high end, uh, you can see that you'll be able to, to have better representation of those true analog movements that are occurring. So that coupled with the high measurement ranges is just providing us with better data to utilize to create more accurate representation of these movements, especially when we get into you know, various different situations, whether it be slow movements or even those high impact, high velocity movements.
Next is going to be the size reduction. So you can see here that we've reduced the size in 15% in the length and width, over 30% in height, and over 50% in weight. So the sensor has become smaller, which is allowing us to have better um, uh, experience when it comes to you know, potential sensor displacement issues. You can see here that, of course, the uh, length and width are, are reduced uh, looking at the system, but then the actual uh, piece that really makes a difference when it comes to that um, you know, inertia and that displacement is that thickness. So there's not as much of a moment arm on this sensor that when you're moving around, uh, you know, you could see the sensor move or, or fly out or anything like that. The neat thing about this is even though we achieved a smaller size sensor, we're actually able to improve the overall operational battery life. So this sensor had an eight hour operational battery life, whereas the Ultium motion sensor, we're able to achieve uh, 10 hours and sometimes even greater than 10 hours, depending on the sample rate that's being uh, utilized. So with a size reduction, we were actually able to increase the, uh, the operational time, which is, uh, which is really awesome. And that's actually because of the efficiency that's built onto the, um, the motherboard of the sensor. So how that electronics design was handled such that it didn't need to waste power in certain areas. Of course, you know, when we talk about a size reduction and how that affects sensor displacement, I have to also mention the strapping system. So we launched uh, our, our you know, new straps for the motion systems uh, this past year. Um, and so we're taking that same concept, but we have clips that are now utilized uh, that snap into the sensors. And you can see here the little grooves that those uh, hold into. And um, they do a great job of making sure that that sensor stays in place on the strap. And then it's just up to you to make sure that you strap down tight enough on that, that limb uh, such that it doesn't uh, you know, move up or down or rotate around on the particular limb that you might be capturing. So next, and this is a really neat feature um, and something that we've been aiming for is, you know, uh, when we first launched the Ultium EMG system uh, in 2018. And so this is a setup, uh, now that we have the Ultium motion system, we have a uni completely universal system. And in fact, the actual sensor charger can be used with either sensor. So it's fit so that the, the same charger can charge EMG sensors or motion sensors. And be it that they use the same communication protocols, they can also uh, communicate with the same receiver. And so you can actually mix and match up to 16 Ultium sensors, EMG or motion, with a single Ultium receiver. Uh, of course, you have the ability to combine two receivers if you want to increase that and perhaps do full body motion capture along with 16 channels of EMG or any of the various smart leads that we have available as well. But this uh, universal connectivity is, is something that uh, is you know, not necessarily seen around the marketplace and really plays into the ease of use advantage that we have with the system because now you've got a smaller footprint with the, with the Ultium system, uh, the receiver uh, on your desk, and you can connect up to whatever sensors that you'd like to measure. And so you can play around with those configurations depending on the needs of your, your given application. Um, that's also going to be a more economical approach for some people who don't necessarily need you know, 16 EMG sensors or full body motion capture, but instead maybe a smaller subset of sensors, let's say you know, seven motion sensors for lower body motion capture, and you know four to six EMG sensors uh, to look at the muscle activation patterns. Let's call it during a running analysis or a walking analysis. Now you can just have a singular system uh, that communicates with both those sensors, and you don't have to purchase multiple units uh, to be able to achieve that. So again, I just wanna review some of these key technical specifications of where we've made these advantages. So first, 
uh, of course, are those measurement ranges. So seeing the 200 G and the plus or minus 7,000 degrees per second allows us to achieve those uh, measurements uh, in the high velocity or high impact situations. If we compare that to the previous system to Research Pro, again, for acceleration, we were only able to capture plus or minus 16 G. In that first video that we looked at, we were able to see what the effect had on that when we got to those upper ranges. Uh, and then next we have the angular velocity at 7,000 degrees per second compared to the Research Pro at 2,000 degrees per second. We have that three times um, increase uh, for the, the capture of the angular velocity. And then we have an improved uh, magnetometer as well. So giving us a higher magnetic range uh, to be able to measure and see how that might be influencing uh, our data. Um, but the key thing here is if we look at these measurement ranges, if we, there are no other motion capture systems, uh, inertial motion capture systems on the marketplace that are able to achieve this year. And so we're really proud that we were able to, to build this into a sensor and start to utilize it. And uh, of course, you know, really excited to announce it to everybody today. Next is going to be those internal sampling rates. So again, that's 1600 Hertz for acceleration and angu angular velocity. That's gonna be twice as much as the internal sampling rate for the, from compared to the previous system. So giving us two times more data to be able to utilize when we push that through our, our calm infusion algorithms. We've got the ability to log up to eight hours or eight plus hours of data on each individual sensor. And with the uh, inclusion into the Ultium system, um, we actually have the ability to not only do online recovery, which was possible with the previous motion system, the Research Pro system, but now we have the ability to do offline recovery, which is similar to how the Ultium EMG system is able to function. So with the sensors plugged into the charger here, this charger, when it's connected to the receiver, you can actually pull data from the sensors and have it fill in the gaps uh, of certain recordings. And so um, I'll show you an example of uh, one that we did previously where we basically utilize these in full data, log data logger mode. But if there's ever any losses of data, whether it be you're you know, going outside of the transmission range or you know, um, you know, longer interruptions for whatever reason, uh, you'll be able to pause that online recovery and then utilize the offline recovery to pull all the data at the end of your day uh, so that you don't have to sit there and wait for the on online recovery to, uh, to take place wirelessly. The battery, so the operational runtime, again, I mentioned that even though we have the smaller sensor, we were still able to achieve a, um, a greater battery life. Uh, due to the efficiency of the board design. So then we move on to the sensor weight. So um, I had mentioned that we achieved a 50% a uh, reduction, but here's the actual spec on that. Of course, the Ultium receiver has that universal connectivity. So being able to capture data from up to 16 channels of Ultium EMG or motion sensors. And then of course, we've got the universal sensor charger, which is able to hold up to nine uh, Ultium EMG or motion sensors. So you can mix and match those within the charger uh, station as well. And then finally, if we look at our measurement output, so these are going to be what you're going to see on the back end um, with regards to the anatomical uh, joint angles or the orientation angles. And then you can also see that if we look at even the, the raw data, those can be captured or presented rather um, at 400 Hertz uh, for acceleration and angular velocity, and then 100 Hertz for the magnetic field and the quaternion data. So now let's talk about some applications. So of course, um, inertial motion systems are, the goal of them is to measure kinematics, measure human movement, look at changes in motion patterns through various different situations. Um, on the research side of things, you know, that would include general motion analysis, uh, rehabilitation engineering, um, the utilization of uh, inertial system in real time during a, a teaching course to describe or, or demonstrate a certain application of movement. Um, maybe it's gait or, or uh, you know, another type of coordinated movement. 
Um, on the clinical side of things, of course, we've got gait analysis, balance testing, general range of motion testing. For ergonomics, we're looking at the work safety parameters, um, human factors and uh, engineering and product design. So the ability to look at how uh, individuals are interacting with a given workspace or, or a product, or um, you know, in this case, as you can see in the picture, a chair, for instance. And so these categories here were fairly well served by the previous system. And so we can play off of you know, the, the advantages and the benefits of the inertial motion capture system, even the research pro systems um, within these three categories. Where we really in, uh, improved upon uh, with the new sensor, not only you know, providing more accurate data for, for these three categories, but now if we go into the sports side of things and we start to look at that high performance testing, the return to play analysis, the throwing, striking, running analysis, those are being uh, served much better with the Ultium motion system because of those, that ability to achieve those higher measurement ranges. Um, as we demonstrated previously, you know, these types of analyses looking at throwing, for instance, was more or less not feasible with the previous system. Uh, in addition to that, things like sprinting, stuff where there's really heavy impacts that are, you know, compounded one after the other uh, was a challenge as well with the previous system. So while we enhanced these application areas, uh, we've now broken into a new barrier uh, of the, um, or broken through a barrier in the sports and the performance side of things with the Ultium motion system. So the package, so this is what the system package will ultimately uh, look like. So of course you'll have a, an Ultium receiver that's going to communicate with uh, whatever number of Ultium motion sensors or Ultium EMG sensors that you might have. You've got the Ultium sensor charger, um, a strap set, which uh, we've got various different options as well as uh, a la carte items if needed. A travel case, so the ability to pack everything up and, and uh, travel or transport the system safely. Accessories such as sensor tape, and then of course, you know, the cables that would all come connected uh, or come to connect to the system and the charger to the receiver, for instance. So it's a fairly co compact uh, system and, you know, this would be plays into the small footprint uh, that the, the system has overall. Um, you know, it really is truly portable. The Ultium motion uh, receiver is powered by USB. So that USB cable is providing data transfer and power. So you can bring that outside with a laptop, for instance, and you'll have full connectivity and ability to use that with the motion uh, or the EMG sensors. Uh, and then, you know, if we talk about the strapping system again, real quick. So one of the things I didn't mention, but would be the silicon beading on the uh, backsides of the straps that really help achieve a uh, good hold on, onto the skin um, so that those straps don't slip and that you don't see that sensor displacement that we were, we were discussing. So this is the, the general package here. And then of course, this can be augmented with various different sensors, be it EMG sensors or smart leads, you know, whatever is necessary for the given application. Uh, and some of you may be portable lab customers. Um, and those of you might be looking for a portable lab. So uh, the Ultium portable lab will be shipping in, in Q2. So uh, sometime this spring, um, what this will include is a fully uh, Ultium integrated portable lab system where you can achieve up to full body motion capture um, with 16 Ultium motion sensors and up to 16 Ultium EMG sensors, uh, as well as the integration of up to two of our Ninox cameras, all self-contained inside of the, the case here. Everything's built in. It creates a you know super efficient way of utilizing these instruments in the field uh, and giving you the ability to, you know, just wheel this around, take it where you need to go, open it up, connect the, you know, two USB cables to the computer, and then you're, you're ready to go. Um, and so we're really excited to finally, you know, get to this, um, this next level of the portable lab system. Uh, for those of you who have been following, uh, this will be our 
I believe our, our third iteration of the portable lab, uh, not counting some you know, very, very early um, <laughs> prototypes that we had for a little bit, uh, maybe five or six years ago. Um, <clears throat> so be on the lookout for, for this system. Uh, and you know, we'll of course be, be doing further announcements as uh, this starts to come live. So we talked about the hardware. So now let's talk about the software side of things. So what are some of the aspects, what's provided with the system? And uh, you know, really not much has changed uh, as far as what data is provided if you compare it to the previous Research Pro system. Um, of course, you get the ability to achieve those higher levels of measurement. You get uh, more accurate data, uh, less error with the, you know, the increases in sample rates and, and everything there. Um, but what we're really ultimately ended up uh, doing here is we're capturing 3D kinematics accelerations and joint trajectories. And the idea is that we want to measure changes in movement patterns. Those can be looked at, you know, utilizing this data that we have here. Uh, of course, we have our anatomical joint angles, orientation angles. So that's how each sensor is rotating in 3D space outside of the body model. We can look at linear acceleration profiles for each one of the sensors. We have several joint trajectories that can be looked at, uh, you know, even a center of mass trajectory whether it be in a relative context uh, or actually looking at that translating over a given area, which we'll, we'll see a couple examples of here shortly. We have the ability to uh, define contact. So during walking or running or even jumping, um, we can see when the feet are on and off the ground um, and utilize that to, to segment data for analyses, let's say a running or a gait analysis, for instance. Uh, we have the ability to generate user-defined angles. So we can take the rotations of one sensor and we can compare that to um, another sensor and create a user-defined angle that might look at the difference between those two. Uh, and then of course we have our raw data that's available uh, at the quaternion level um, or the raw component data, data. So looking at the acceleration, the rotational velocity or the magnetic field data. And so these are all going to be enhanced by further software developments, uh, which of course the Ultia Motion System will be coupled with a new version of Myo Research. And so some of those additional tools include uh, updated filter designs and options for, for uh, enhanced optimization and stabilization of the data. Uh, enhanced magnetic field rejection algorithms, both on the software side uh, and also, you know, the inclusion of some of those uh, or some of the functional calibrations, which we released in the 316 version this past year. Um, so utilizing those, uh, the functional calibration, as well as the, uh, the additional um, stabilization uh, tools that we've got, you'll be able to use the system in magnetically affected areas uh, without issue. Um, of course, we have multiple calibration options, you know, not only the standard calibration, um, which has a couple different positions that you can choose from, whether it be the standard soldier pose um, or, you know, a seated calibration, but then we have our functional calibrations for use in those magnetic environments. Uh, and we also have our calibration adjustment tool, uh, which we'll be aiming to have integrated with the Ultium motion system uh, in the near future here. Of course, we have our various different uh, viewer tools that are available. So whether that's enabling those joint trajectories to look at the uh, movement patterns uh, of, of, a, of a specific joint, um, or you know, looking at different viewpoints of the avatar. And we're aiming to have some additional viewer tools that will be, be available, um, as well as some options for uh, different avatars as well. So keep an eye out because we'll be uh, basically unveiling these additional tools as we go forward through the release plan of the Ultium Motion system. Uh, and so we'll be posting those up to our social media and to our website. So keep an eye out and make sure you go and follow us there to, to follow along. So one of the things that I want to talk about real quick is those optimization um, filters or the stabilization filters. And so this was a really neat um, measurement, uh, test measurement that we just did the other week. 
where we actually were sort of stressing the system out as much as we could. And so we went on a two hour hike uh, in Arizona. It was a, a beautiful day, um, you know, <laughs> for those of you that haven't been to Arizona in the, the winter time, it's uh, probably like summertime for most other places in the world, but uh, it's uh, generally cool and sunny. And so uh, it's, it's a great time to get outside. Um, so we went on this two hour hike and, and basically what we did is we set up the system in the parking lot of the trailhead. Uh, we started the measurement, did the calibration and then went about the hike and then finished that uh, that measurement at the same spot. The goal here was to be able to measure what the error, the displacement, overall displacement error was um, from the start and the finish. Um, we also uh, utilized a, a GPS uh, and implemented that data into MR3 so that we could see the actual track or pathway of the hike uh, and have that be compared to the, the pathway uh, generated simply by the joint trajectories with the motion system. So with our standard filter, and this would be um, just utilizing some of the benefits of the new system, like the high sampling rate, uh, and you know uh, having the recording and doing some um, forward and backward optimization, uh, we were able to see a 2.5% error. So um, of the compared to the total distance of the hike, which is about seven kilometers, uh, we only saw a 183 meter difference between the starting and the ending positions after that hike was complete. And I guess I didn't necessarily mention, but we were using this in full data log mode. So there was over 99% loss of data by the time that we finished. And we were able to use that uh, sensor charger to pull all the information from those sensors and fill it into the uh, recording so that we had a complete recording without any data loss issues. Um, so not only you know are we stressing it in that way, but then of course with the hike, you've got various elevation changes, you've got you know multiple impacts that are occurring depending on if you're going uphill or downhill or you know turning a corner. And so uh, we were very excited to see that we had this uh, amount of error just with the standard filter option. Now, if we apply our optimized filter, you can see here just in general how that pathway. Uh, you know, starts to look more and more like the GPS pathway that we are seeing up here. So we, you know, lose some of that variability um, that you're seeing in this area uh, through the optimization. And, and really all that this is adding um, <clears throat> is uh, just some drift corrections that, that uh, are part of this optimizer filter profile. And of course, we'll have more details on both of these um, available. Uh, as time goes on, we'll be, you know, creating uh, documentation so that everybody has an understanding of what exactly is going on there. Um, but what we were able to achieve here was a 1.5% error, so only a 110 meter difference between the start and end positions. So those are very exciting results, especially after a two hour um, measurement. Um, neat thing is, and, you know, much shorter measurements, which are generally a little bit more, um, uh, common than a, a two hour measurements, we're able to see uh, errors that are, you know, less than half a percent uh, when it comes to the, the measurement of translation. And that's just because of not only the better data that we're utilizing with the system, but then also, you know, the, the updated enhanced filtering options that we're able to have access to because of that better data uh, coming from the Ultium motion system. So let's take a look at a couple of video examples here. So this is a, a full body uh, baseball pitch. Um, and I always like to try and stop this here if I can right on that peak value. But we're able to see that at that release point for one, you know, you can see that we've got a really smooth trajectory of the hand motion here and the arm all the way through the pitch. Uh, but this is what I wanted to call out was the raw data. So this is the right hand. And not only, you know, as we saw previously with respect to the acceleration signals, um, where we were seeing, you know, about 70 Gs of acceleration as our peak value, uh, but then we can also see um, the gyroscope signal with that peak value nearing, you know, roughly 6,000 degrees per second. 
So with the previous system, you know, only being able to capture 16 Gs of acceleration and 2000 degrees per second of rotation, uh, this type of movement was not possible uh, to be able to capture. So we we're very excited to be able to finally measure these applications and provide a solution to people who want to use wearable systems in these, uh, in these contexts. So now if we look at uh, a soccer kick here, so an actual impact, you know, when we're kicking a ball. Um, and again, you know, not only are we just having really smooth movements, uh, the ability to capture that, that smooth leg trajectory here, but we can even see at that impact, and let's see if I can stop it on the peak again. Oh, I was close. Let me get back here. Oh, it's going, going crazy. Uh, let me get back to that slide. Here we go. So we'll try and stop it one more time, see if I can get it right on that peak. Oh, okay. So what we're seeing though is, is roughly almost 100 Gs of, of acceleration. And uh, that, again, was not something that was possible uh, based off of uh, the previous system. And so we're able to now capture that information and we can see those impacts, whereas previously it just was, it wasn't gonna be feasible. It would cause error in the model, it would cause error in the data that you're seeing, which not only has an effect on just the raw information, but then the kinematics that are presented thereafter. So in this case, we've got a sprinting trial. And again, I wanted to pull out some of the, uh, um, some of the peaks that we're seeing here on the feet uh, for the acceleration. And so this is something where we can even just see that our ranges, our peak ranges are around that 75 G mark. Um, so again, you know, with plus or minus 16 Gs, those impacts, you know, maybe they, we were clipping them at 16 G, but as they compounded and we weren't able to get back to those grid, the, the measurement ranges because the impacts during sprinting are happening so quickly, uh, that would ultimately cause some issues. And so now with the sprinting uh, and the Ultium motion system, we have the ability to capture this information and have a nice smooth representation of that sprint form. Um, and of course, you can even see here that we have the Ultium motion insole, or sorry, the Ultium insoles uh, implemented into this measurement as well so that we can get information about the pressure distribution, about the step timing, um, along with the kinematic data. So that would be another advantage of having that, uh, that uh, multi-device system. In this example, what I want to showcase is that ability to make those trajectory measurements. And so this is all, you know, kind of a, goes hand in hand uh, with not only the sensor design um, and its ability to give us that better data with the high sampling rates, um, but then also what we're working on from the software side. Um, the ability to, to enhance that contact detection, have better representation of the uh, trajectories uh, utilizing the acceleration data. And something like this, you know, we weren't necessarily able to do. We can now capture backwards running, we can do sidestepping, we can see that change of movement. And again, you know, that overall error that we were seeing from the start and end positions uh, was, was less than 1%, even in this particular um, even in this particular dynamic context where there's a lot going on, uh, changing directions, heavy impacts, uh, different styles of movement. And then finally, I just wanna show a, um, a setup that is that multi-device setup. So again, um, being able to utilize the advantage of that universal connectivity and have a system that has motion, EMG, pressure distribution, all operating off of one receiver. And, uh, and so in this case, this would be a great package, for instance, to be able to utilize for running or gait analysis, where we've got uh, the lower body in the trunk for the motion capture. So can we, look, we can look at the kinematics uh, during those movements. We've got four channels of EMG to look at the muscle firing patterns as it relates to those movements. And then we have the Ultium insoles implemented as well to look at that pressure distribution, look at the contact patterns uh, when somebody is walking or running. 
And all of these sensors, so those combined, you know, so you have one for each insole, you've got nine sensors for the, um, <clears throat> for the motion system, and then four EMG sensors, that's 15 sensors. So that all communicates with one single Ultium receiver. Uh, so again, allowing that universal connectivity to take place uh, and allow you, know, you as the user to craft your systems in a more economical way uh, so that you can have you know, what you need uh, without having to you know, have multiple systems or purchase multiple systems. So um, we're nearing the end here. Uh, and I do want to just talk about the launch promotion that we're having, uh, which will be taking place uh, through uh, the end of September, as you can see here. Uh, and so there's two options. So we've got new customers. So those are customers that do not have an Ultium motion system. Uh, this promotion allows them to receive one free sensor and one full body strap set uh, with their purchase of a minimum of six motion sensors. Uh, and then we have our current customers. So those are customers that already have uh, um, a Research Pro or a clinical IMU system. Um, and if they decide that they want to also purchase the Ultium motion system, uh, again, a minimum of six sensors as well as the Ultium receiver, uh, they would receive a 15% discount on that, uh, that system and a one year software maintenance contract for free as well. So two promotions to hopefully motivate everybody out there to, uh, to contact us and, and uh, you know, learn some more about the system uh, and potentially see if we can get it involved in, in your applications, you know, whether that be in the lab or the clinic or the performance center, um, uh, you know, to be able to utilize this equipment.